What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here and it's Top 10 Thursday. Part of the fun of beating a game is really analyzing the plot when you're through, thinking about the characters and all the details they gave you and wondering, does this make sense? Sometimes people begin to question what they saw and come up with their own theory on how they think a game ended. This can lead to some truly crazy stories all on their own. So this week, we're taking a look at those on my list of the top 10 epic gaming fan theories. Number 10. Unspoken Wars. The land of Pokemon is so bright and colorful. For those lucky enough to live here, every day is an adventure and anyone has a chance of becoming a Pokemon master. Things might not have always been this wonderful though. When you challenge the Vermilion City gym leader to a duel, he mentions that there was once a great war. He says that his Pokemon protected him in combat and helped him crush his foes. This means that at least one point in history, these furry creatures were actually being used as weapons. The idea of a massive world war makes sense when you start noticing how few adults there are, how almost all the kids are left without parents, and the strangely powerful man-made Pokemon like Mewtwo. Maybe this place isn't quite as magical as we all assumed. Number 9. Companion Cube's Secret In the 2007 puzzle masterpiece Portal, our hero Chell must solve a series of difficult physics problems to escape a lab run by a killer robot. During this quest for freedom, it's hinted that she's not the first person to try and break free of these tests. Many before her walked this road but failed. Thankfully, we get a bit of help in the form of the companion cube. This tiny block becomes our friend, protector, and painful laser stopper. While this brick may be cute, it seems something darker could be going on with it. It's said that people have heard the companion cubes speak. In fact, some subjects even grow afraid that the block may, quote, still be alive. We know that thousands of employees in this lab were all killed off in a single day, but where are the bodies? There are those that think to save time and mess, they just shoved all the corpses into the factory and converted them into happy, heart-painted boxes. Number 8. Virtual Reality Flashback Perhaps the most complicated yet beloved franchise ever is Metal Gear Solid. Over the course of this long-running series, we've seen mind-controlling nanomachines, vampires, and tons of clones, but the weirdest thing of all is something we might not be seeing. In Snake Eater, we play as the legendary soldier Snake, trying to stop terrorists in the 1960s. During the opening, they tell him that this will be a virtuous mission, which he mishears as a virtual mission. The line seems so out of place in the otherwise serious briefing. Things begin to go off the rails a bit more when you have a fight against the gun-twirling assassin Ocelot. You're supposed to leave him alive since we see him again in future games. If you kill him, Campbell will get mad at you for creating a time paradox and reset the match. How would he know that? And more importantly, why doesn't he talk like that for the rest of the game? We've seen crazy virtual reality in this universe before, leading some to theorize that Metal Gear Solid 3 could all be a huge simulation. Number 7. Link is dead. This kid sure has a rough life. When Link isn't saving Hyrule or lost in dungeons, he's getting trapped in the world of the dead. Wait, hold on a second, let me back up. After the conclusion of Ocarina of Time, Link is left wandering the earth, that is until he stumbles into the forest of Termina. Here he encounters an evil imp who's just unlocked incredible magic inside himself with the help of Majora's Mask. With his newfound strength, he's decided to pull the moon from the sky and destroy the planet. The theory about this game is that these events are really just a vision Link is having after dying during his travels. The land of Termina is completely based around the stages of dealing with death and is built to make him face the truth of his own fate. From the swamps, home to an angry king raging about his destiny, to the citizens in town planning a party as the moon grows in size. Everyone seems to be taking part in trying to tell Link one thing. He died a long time ago and now needs to face that reality. Number 6. The Kidnapped Villager 
You awaken in a dark room. Before you is a cat person. As you take in your surroundings, he tells you that you need to hurry up and catch a bus. As you board the vehicle, you notice no one else is riding it. It's just you and the cat, and he keeps asking you to be excited about wherever you're going. Soon you arrive at a mysterious town where you're given a house and told that you need to work essentially millions of hours to pay it off. Does that sound like a happy little adventure to you? Many fans of the Animal Crossing series have started to think that something is slightly odd about how our villager ends up stuck in such a bad situation with really no way out. The residents of this city are all quite strange and constantly want you to do tasks for them. Collecting fossils, catching fish, or just digging holes. The list of chores that needs to be done never ends. Some people believe that the person we play as isn't here by choice, but is secretly a random human they kidnapped as part of a bizarre act of slavery, and no amount of money will ever let you be free. Number 5. Broken Hand Nintendo's famous fighting game is extremely unique, bringing together a large cast of friends from throughout the decades to all do battle in tons of arenas makes for some insanely awesome fun. If you watch the opening cutscene of Super Smash Bros, you see the reason behind these brilliant matchups is a mysterious glove that magically brings our buddies to life in order to duel. On its own, this is a pretty standard plot setting to explain having all these characters existing side by side, but upon closer inspection, things don't feel right. To start with, the last boss of each game has you literally fighting the hand that made you. Add this together with a rather random final fight in Brawl against an enemy called Taboo and it all comes clear. See the strings on Master Hand? This is all part of a bigger conflict that the Nintendo mascots are locked in the middle of. Every time we beat the game, we're really destroying the being that originally made this all possible in the first place. Number 4. Ubisoft's Connected Universe over the last 15 years, Ubisoft has been slowly growing into one of the most powerful gaming companies. After making Assassin's Creed, Splinter Cell, Watch Dogs, and Far Cry, they've become known for how giant their projects can be. What if I told you that all these crazy adventures were taking place in the same universe, and in fact, some might even be going on simultaneously? Looking closely at some subtle hints left in the world does point to this amazing idea. By hacking cell phones and watchdogs, you can see where random people work, tap into the right device, and you can find employees of Abstergo, the evil masterminds of Assassin's Creed. If you happen to get lost in the jungles of Far Cry, you can find folders in abandoned office that also reference Abstergo. While developers often like to hide tiny secrets in their games just for fun, this seems more deliberate than that. It's almost like all these Ubisoft heroes are being trained and united across time for some epic final war that will span throughout the ages. Number 3. Indoctrination Theory Of all the entries on the list, this one is probably the best known. The ending of Mass Effect 3 left millions of gamers shocked and pretty disappointed. Rather than getting a thrilling conclusion to this vast intergalactic trilogy, they got a creepy ghost kid telling them that robots and humans both kinda suck. Fans were so distraught by this that they decided to go back and really start digging through the clues to see if there was truly more going on here than meets the eye. That's when the indoctrination theory came about. The basis for this train of thought is that the last scenes of the game aren't real, but instead a hallucination happening inside Shepard's head. These massive, world-consuming creatures have the added talent of being able to warp the brains of beings they encounter in order to control them. There are some that think when Shepard is knocked out by a laser blast during the epic finale, his mind is invaded by the Reapers. Shepard believes he's standing up, limping to this teleporter, and then talking to people inside a spaceship. In reality, he's still laying on the ground and letting the reapers destroy the earth while he sleeps. This would help explain why the ending was just so random and full of nonsense. Number 2. Heroes Become Villains Bioshock may have been a short series, but it left a huge impact on the gaming world. Its story was nothing short of astounding, but there was always a curious sense of disconnection between the games. While the first two titles took place in the underwater city of Rapture, the third took place in a floating town above the clouds. The main thing that ties these together is the dimension-skipping ending of Bioshock Infinite. Elizabeth begins to fold reality in on itself so that Booker DeWitt can see all the other paths he could have traveled on. 
wrong. During this, she takes him to an elevator that leads to the shadowy halls of Rapture. But wait, this is essentially impossible due to certain key details of the original Bioshock. As the city is consumed by chaos, Andrew Ryan, the mayor, locks down the elevator so no one can escape. The only person who can come or go is someone who has Andrew Ryan's DNA. Basically, this means that you have to be a direct family member or the man himself. Here we clearly see Booker walking right up to it and using it with no trouble. These two games take place 50 years apart, but somehow it seems that Booker is the missing link. Maybe a different version of him in one of the other dimensions chooses to build Rapture and sets in motion the madness that this series becomes. Number 1 Squall's Final Mission What if you beat a game that started out perfectly normal, but slowly got more insane as he has somehow found yourself battling a time-traveling god? That's really what goes down in Final Fantasy VIII. Squall is part of a military team that undertakes some incredibly complex missions around the globe. When he's paid to assassinate a dark sorceress during a political speech, he gladly takes the job. Here's the thing though, we don't know if he was ever successful in his assignment. As the mission unfolds, all their plans fall apart, and Squall decides to simply rush the stage and kill her himself. When he charges her, he's stabbed completely through the chest by a huge ice spike. No one would ever be able to survive damage like that. The screen fades to black, and when our hero wakes up, he's not injured in the slightest. It's almost like nothing took place. From here, the plot gets pretty crazy as Squall makes it back to base, finds out that his school is secretly a car, his old rival is now the bodyguard of a god, and figures out that he randomly forgot his weird childhood. The seemingly off-the-wall events have led many to assume that this is just the sad final moments of his dying mind. As Squall falls over with the ice shard still in his chest, he dreams up a scenario where he got to be the hero he always wanted. Personally, I think this one really could be true because it just comes together so well, and for that reason, I'm awarding this my pick as the most epic gaming fan theory. Did your favorite theory not make the list? Got an idea for a future top 10? Leave it in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But do me the biggest favor of all and keep dreaming. If you'll notice, I'm actually wearing my Aperture Science shirt today. I figured due to the death of the Companion Cube and what may have been many more deaths inside the Companion Cube, it was only fitting to honor that awesome, awesome game. You, you know what? I'm gonna go play Portal. Go play Portal right now if you haven't already. That game is amazing. What am I doing? Let's do this. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, maybe check out my last video. Please subscribe, and if you want, share this somewhere with your friends.